for those of us that have been following the team for this week, who's going to remind us of what we've been talking about? I don't want to assume that we all know. What. Yes, we've been talking about what? Yes, sacrifice. Yes. Sacrifice of praise. What is a sacrifice? What is a sacrifice? How will you describe a sacrifice in your own ways? Create your own vocabulary to describe what a sacrifice is. Anybody? What is a sacrifice? Giving up something. Yes, somebody said giving up something. Yes, any other thing? Any other definition of a sacrifice? God bless you. God bless you. Parting away with something that is what? That is very painful. That is very painful to you. Very expensive for you to part with. You see? Something that is hard for you to, uh, to part with. Before we proceed further, let's look at the text from the book of Hebrews. 1315, book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 15. Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 15. If you are the first person to be there, just go ahead and read it for us. Yes. Yes. Giving thanks. His name. Now, there is something in that verse which I want to point our attention to. The verse starts by saying, By him. By him. Probably, if we have read, if you have been reading it from verse 13 downward, we will have known whom they are talking about. But whom do you think they are talking about? When they said by him, who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ. The other, another way to read it is through Jesus. Through whom? Through Jesus. Therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of what? Of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. That openly profess his name. Hebrew 13, chapter 15. Now, why am I reading this again? Praise does not, praise itself does not always cost us something. When we just talk about praise, praise itself does not always what cost us something. For example, we, we praise our dogs for fetching the ball when you throw the ball out. You say, oh, you this dog. You are what? You are a very good dog. See? We praise members of the football team. We also have praises to them. Anyway, we won. We say we praise them for the job well what? We praise them for the job well done. You see? Praise itself is often a response to some actions that directly benefits us. And we feel generous because we want to extend it. That yes, this action has what? Has benefited us. Somehow, we often find it easy to praise God. Especially when we have been blessed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You see? But some people can even begin to sing song of worship and talk about how good God is. Because, oh, this is money in my what? In my pocket. But when we talk about sacrifice of what? 
of praise. When does praise significantly move up, become upgraded, to become a what? A sacrifice. To become a sacrifice. And that's exactly what we've been talking about. You see? There are occasions in which we don't want to sing. There are situations in which we feel depressed. Not a day passes when we don't face suffering as human beings. Loss of a very close person. We grieve in one way or another. You see? In my own opinion, suffering, loss, and grief have been very effective in blocking a lot of people's ability to do what? To praise. To offer praise. You see? And when praise can come out of your mouth at this particular period, that is when praise has become what? A sacrifice. Because it's difficult for you. It's difficult for you to, to offer it at that particular time. You see, when I went to Nigeria, and uh, there is a very close friend of us that lost, uh, that lost her husband. So we went to their house at least to pray with them and to, to offer moral support. God there we find a lot of other people that they have come to to do the same thing, to sympathize with them as well. The whole environment was so tense to the extent that if anything drops, everybody will what? Everybody will hear that something has dropped. You see? Supposing somebody just stomp into the room and start singing and start jumping, what do you think they will say? They will say is what? Yes, they will say that person is crazy. De definitely, this man is what? He's crazy. But that is what God wants. We just don't, sometimes we don't understand how God works. Like Habakkuk, he said, Oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help? And you will not what? Hear me. You see? When it looks like we have prayed, and God is not answering our prayer. The next thing we should start offering is what? Is for praise. You have tried everything. You have fasted. You've been in the church so many times. You've been praying about a particular issue. All of a sudden, the next thing the Bible prescribes is that if you're not working, then begin to do what? Begin to praise God. Begin to praise God. So that is when all of a sudden praise has become a what? A sacrifice. Praise has become a sacrifice. Because there are often in life where God did not come through the way we thought he would. See? A lot of times. Ever since I've become a Christian, I've come to the realization from the preaching I've had from different occasions that God answers to prayer at three. There are times God will say, yes, I'm going to do what I'm going to do for you. And there are times that God will say, well, look, no. Because God knows that if I do it for you, this is what we want. This is what will happen to you. No is an answer. God. But we just don't know. And there are times in which God will say, wait. It's not yet what? It's not yet time. That is God. That is God. It's not that he doesn't love us. But he sees the beginning and what? And the end. Is the Alpha and what? And the Omega. I 
the Omega. And that's the person that we are dealing with. When the medical test comes back positive, the spouse wants to divorce. A child, a child is wayward. The must be coming calls, etc., etc. At this moment, praise has become a word. For it to come out of your mouth, it has become a what? A sacrifice. A sacrifice. It has become a sacrifice. To praise God at that point in time, it requires personal what? Personal sacrifice. It's not and the concept that the Bible is teaching us through Hebrew 13, 15 is that no human being can offer sacrifice of praise unless that person is being strengthened by our Lord Jesus what? Jesus Christ. It's time I say, say through him, by him. Therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of what? Of praise. He's the one that will strengthen you. That will generate you. It's not like you are just starting something that you don't want to do. In you, you need the strength. You need the power from the Lord Jesus Christ. He made the first sacrifice. He made the first one. Sacrifice. You see? Because certain things are very difficult that we say, oh, I will do it. You may try as much as possible. You see, but when you are being faced by the prospect of losing your life, the environment turns into something else. May God help us in Jesus' name. May God strengthen us in Jesus' name. If you look at the introductory portion, which we are going to read to together, it says, sacrifice of praise is a what? It's a spiritual weapon. <laughs> the sacrifice of praise itself is a spiritual weapon. Just like prayer, just like fasting. Just like the word of God, just like the blood of Jesus. Those are spiritual weapons. And it's very effective in pushing back the forces of the evil. What the devil don't want you to do is to sing praises to the Almighty God. You see? And that is why at moments that I've described before, the devil will be glad to see you rolling on the floor. The devil will be glad to see you weeping. The devil will be glad to see you sorrowing. <laughs> and that's why our Lord Jesus Christ said, forget all about that. Be of good cheers. I have what? I have overcome all these things for you. That's the time praise has become a what? A sacrifice. It is also effective in helping us to better focus on God in our daily lives. When you praise God when you are in pain, you take the focus from what you are passing through. To whom? To God. Because the Bible tells us the battle is of the Lord. We are going to talk about that too. The battle is of of the Lord. Praise help us to have a better intimate communication with him and to hear God's voice. When you praise him, you will hear his word. You will hear his voice. It's not a God that will run away from us. You will hear his voice. And hearing God's voice is the most important part of our fellowship time with God. It's the most important time, thing that can happen to any Christian. So even if you describe it to your spouse, you won't understand you, what you are saying. It's personal. God talks to human beings personal. Praise also help us to know God in real and personal ways, rather than just know about God. You know, to know God is different from to know about what? Even people outside, they know about God. The devil knows him. People outside, well, they know we are here. They know about Jesus. They know about everything, the whole aspect of our 
mood of worship. But what about to have a personal way, to be close to him, to really know God in real and personal ways? Let's look at Psalm 27, verse 6. Psalm 27, verse 6. If you are the first person to be there, just read it for Psalm 27, verse 6. And now shall my head be lifted up above what? Above my enemies. Round about me. Yes. Yes. Sacrifices of what? Of joy. I will sing. I will sing praises unto the Lord. The psalmist said, when I sing praises unto the Lord, my head will be lifted up above what? Above my enemies. Above my enemies. Because we are cheerfully made. We are wonderfully made. That's what the Bible says. God help us in Jesus' name. So tonight, we are going to be going through three different outlines. Three different outlines. The first one is the genesis of sacrifice of praise itself and how it works in Christian life. Second one is I want to briefly talk about something that must die in you before you can offer a sacrifice of what? Of praise. Something has to die in you before your praise can become a what? A sacrifice. And lastly, Oh, I have four outlines, you know, three, four outlines. We're going to be talking about praise when it is a sacrifice. It has become a gift, a worship gift. And lastly, which is a D, we're going to be looking at sacrifice of praise as a spiritual what? weapon, as a spiritual weapon. A lot of times, something we don't focus on is praise, especially when we are passing through troubles. That's why the fact that we read every day how people in the Bible pass through the same problem they are passing through, and they use this praise to conquer. But we are so overwhelmed by what we are passing through to the extent that we focus on we don't focus on praise. We focus on prayer, we focus on fasting. We focus on the word of God. But one thing we really focus on is what? Is praise. And the Bible actually describes situations in the scripture. There are situations in the scripture in which people have prayed, people have fasted, and then when they've done it, and no answer is coming from this God, they started doing what? They started praising him. And the reply came. And the reply came. God will put smile on your faces in the name of Jesus. Uh, let's move on quickly because of our time. The first lesson outline, which I'm going to throw open to every one of us. What do I mean when I say sacrifice of praise is empowered by God? What am I talking about? That sacrifice of praise is empowered by God. I'm going to open the discussion for us. That sacrifice of praise is empowered by God. Through Christ that strengthened me. God bless you, sir. I can do all things through whom? Through Christ that strengthened me. Do you know it's very easy to say that we can praise God 
when you are very sorry. May bad thing never happen to you. May you not lose any of your close ones. Brethren, it's hard. It's what? Let us be practical. It's very hard. When you lose somebody that is very close to you, to now begin to do what? To sing. It's hard. It's not something that is easy. And that is why praise, that is why they say it is something that has to be generated by the almighty God himself. It, it has to be somebody that is in Jesus. That is empowered by our Lord Jesus to be able to do that. I think I explained to him. Number one, we make a sacrifice by him. We make a sacrifice by whom? By him. By Jesus. Whatever sacrifice you want to make, you make it by him. Because sacrifice itself is painful. Even when you want to pay your tithe, you need the Holy Spirit to really do what? Yes, to really talk into your mind. When you want to give first offerings, when you want to plant a seed, you really need who? The Holy Spirit. Something will start it in you. It's not just something that you just wake up and say, I'm going to do like Brother Shelby is doing. I'm going to make sure I do this. No. It has to come through him. May he touch every one of us hearts tonight in the name of Jesus. So anything sacrifice is made through him. And who am I speaking of when I say through him? Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. See? And the second one is, ju is just like this. I said it is, it is offered not by our own what? Strength. You can't do it by your own strength. What your own strength can do are people coming to, to, to sympathize with you. You will not sorrow. You will not die in the name of Jesus. It's not easy. It's not easy. See, it's not by our own strength. It's not even by our own abilities. No matter how much matter if you have much you've been in the church as a walk. When it comes, first thing that gets out of your mouth is what? It's praise. So, sacrifice of praise is empowered by God. As stated in Hebrew 13, 15. And I noted it here that all our sacrifices are empowered by Jesus who came and made the ultimate what? Sacrifice. He came and he made the ultimate sacrifice. That's why in the Bible, when Jesus Christ talked about, there's an instance in the Bible in which Jesus Christ was talking about forgiveness. His disciples. He was just talking to them about forgiveness itself. If your brother offends you five times, you know, make sure you uh, and he comes to you five times, make sure you do what? You forgive him five times. And he was just talking about forgiveness. I was expecting the disciples to, to raise a question in a different direction. But what did they say? They said, love, increase our what? Our faith. Because they knew what he was saying. It's not something that is easy to do. They said, with this one you have just said, you, had, you have to increase our faith for us to be able to do this. You have to surely increase our faith. May our faith be increased in Jesus' name. Number five. So when we use Jesus Christ in his name, just like he offered himself for us, you will see that by his power, we'll be able to offer 
lift up praise unto the Almighty God. You'll be able to offer and lift up praise unto the Almighty God. That is the first concept I want us to understand about sacrifice of praise. About sacrifice of praise. Let somebody read the second lesson outline. Yes. <laughs> from where does the praise that you offer come from? Come from your heart. But for it to be clean praise, it has to be what? It has to come from your mouth. You have to offer it, say it out. It has to come from your lips. That is where I'm going. For you to offer sacrifice of praise, something must die before you can be able to offer it. And what is it that must die? Romans 3, 10 to 14. Romans 3, 10 to 14. The book of Romans As it is written, there is no righteous, no not one. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes. Unprofitable. Yes. No, not one. Yes. They are tongues. That's why I'm going. Yes, the poison of us is under their what? Under their lips. The poison of us is under their what? That poison must what? Must go away. That poison must what? Must go away. The tongue. The tongue kills. Without holding a gun. The tongues get blood out of people without a knife. The tongue has to be tamed for you to be able to offer what? A sacrifice of praise. And to the Almighty God. May God forgive us and have mercy on us in Jesus' name. I have it here that we need to first draw what naturally comes out of our mouth. If you listen to people, you will feel like slapping some people. Even when they talk in the church. And it, this is the same mouth they use to offer abuses. The same mouth they use to gossip that they want to use to offer what? Praise. Let's see what the scripture said. James 1.26. Then somebody, Ephesians 4.29. Yes. Yes. Seem to be religious. And breathe and not his tongue. But deceive his own heart. Is in vain. It's in vain, brethren. It's in vain. We may come, we may jump, we may be drunk. Bible says, if any man among you seems to be religious, all those things are religion. And breathe not his tongue. But deceive his own heart. This man's religion is what? It's in vain. Your worship is in vain. Your praise is in vain. That's what the scripture is saying. Something must die. Something 
something needs to be taken and replaced. Ephesians 4.29. Ephesians 4.29. Yes. Yes. That's right. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Out of your mouth. First Peter 3.10. First Peter 3.10. Speak no what? Yes. And lastly, Ephesians 5 4. Yes. 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 Which are not confident, but rather giving of what? Giving of thanks. Neither filthiness, neither foolish talking. Not even justly, which are not convenient, but rather giving what? Giving thanks. Something must die. Fieldiness must go away. Foolish talking must go away. Before a priest can be acceptable in the sight of the Almighty. May your praises be acceptable to God in the name of Jesus. We have to get rid of the old way of talk. We have to get rid of our old way of talk. We have to crucify our whole speaking habits. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I know sometimes somebody was telling me that certain Bible recommendations are just too stringent. I said they are easy. They are what? They are easy. You just need to make it a habit. Make praise a what? Habit. If you make gossip a habit, what will happen? All the life of that person, he will be what? He will be gossiping. All these things, all these behaviors are habit formation. We used to have a classmate. This lady cannot utter two words without looking at your body and using certain things in your body to abuse you. It's like God, the, the, the devil created her for that purpose. <laughs> If she enters this house like this and she looks at you, and she will say it, to, and it's going to kick him. So some people are like that. So, brethren, what am I saying? I'm saying that we have to cultivate the habit of praising God. After all, what the Bible says is not just once. You praise God what? Continue. Praise God continually. May God help us in Jesus' name. We're going forward. Tell your neighbor we're going forward. Yes, you will have upward upliftment tonight in the name of Jesus. You will not go back to the old stuff you didn't want to be. The devil will not have any role in your life. In the name of Jesus. See. Praise. When it is a sacrifice, is a worship gift. I know people talk about praise and what? Praise and worship. But I want to tell us that we are not worshiping if we don't praise God. We are not what? We are not worshiping if we don't praise God. 
very difficult for you to say you are worshiping God when you are not what? When you are not praising God. Let's look at the book of Job 1 and see how Job taught us how to truly worship when it is hard. Job 1 Job 1, 20 and 21. Yes. And rent his mantle. And shake his head. And fell down upon the ground. And worship God. And said, Naked came high out. Yes. Naked shall I return. He that. The Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That was Job. You all know the story of Job. Job's wife looked straight into his eyes. She said, Cause God and do what? And die. Somebody that was supposed to encourage him. He said, cause God and do what? And die. And his friends look at his face and said, you know what? It's because of your sin. See? But instead, look at what Job did. The Bible tells us that Job went down. He said, naked came out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I what? Shall I return? Said the Lord gave. The Lord gave. And the Lord had what? Had taken away. Blessed be what? Be the name of the Lord. That is the sacrifice of praise right there. That is the sacrifice of praise right there. Outline D, which is uh, about the last, the last outline we are going to be talking about tonight. Tell your friend, praise is a spiritual weapon. Praise is a spiritual weapon. Yes, sacrifice of praise as a spiritual weapon. Sacrifice of praise as a spiritual weapon. Second Corinth, Second Chronicles twenty, fifteen to twenty five. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The battle is not what? It's not yours, but of God. Yes. You will not need to do what? Yes, go ahead. Position yourself. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Go out against them. For the Lord is with you. Yeah, all do that. See what they do. Yeah, go ahead. They bow down before the Lord, worshiping. What were they doing? Worshiping God. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. 
Lord your God, and you shall be established. Yes, and you shall prosper. Yes. Who should do what? Yes, he raised an army of singers. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord for his mercy and endures forever. We all know the end of that story because of our time. What am I saying? This is number one, outline D. When you praise God, when your enemies confront you, the praise lift your eyes from the battle to the victory. The praise it lift your eyes from what? From the battle to what? To victory. That's what happens. You will not be able to see the battle again. What you'll be seeing in front of you will be what? Will be victory. And that's exactly what King Jerusalem did. He raised an army of singers. And became victorious. So, praise is a weapon of what? It's a spiritual what? It's a spiritual weapon. Praise is a spiritual weapon. God help us in Jesus' name to be able to use it uh, as we want. See? What I want us to realize is that may God continue to be with the choir. Even in the service, in any church, the first thing, the first department the devil attacks is the praise and worship session. I've seen it a lot of, of times. When people are busy singing and dancing, that is when you will see somebody throwing what? Throwing chair. The praise and worship segment of the service is the devil who always wants to do what? It's up to us as worshippers to note this. So during praise and worship, we will not always give the Satan any what? Any chance. The focus will be on what? Yes. Not on moving around. May God help us in Jesus' name. Number two, praise silences the enemy. I would like us to read Psalm 8, verse 2. Yes, yes, you have ordained, yes, because of the enemy. Out of the mouth of what? <laughs> Babes. And so as thou ordain what? Strength. Because of thy what? Of thy enemies. That thou may steal the enemy and the avenger. That is praise. Sunlaces the earth. What about Matthew 21 16? Matthew 21 16. Fairly identical. He said unto him, Yes. 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 Have ye never read out of the mouth of the babes and so clean thou hast perfected praise. Thou hast perfected what? Praise. Out of the mouth of babes 
so thou hast perfected what? Praise. To destroy the enemies. To destroy the enemies. May God help us in Jesus' name. So praise silences the enemy. If you are doing family altar, make sure you have your praise. It's enormous. It's what? It's enormous. Because the devil will run away from that house. He doesn't want what? He doesn't want you to praise God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Number three. Praise breaks the enemy's oppression and creates miracles. Acts 16, 25 to 26. Acts 16, 25 to 26. Yeah. And singing him to God. Yes. 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 Shaking. All the doors open. We all know the story very well. <laughs> and what were they doing? They were just praising God. I really want you to practicalize it. Transfer it into your daily life. And see how it works. When you have a boss that doesn't like you at work, <laughs> if you sing in front of that boss, <laughs> what do you think will be on that head? He will feel like destroying you. That is how it is to the devil. If you have somebody at work that hates you, and you come every morning, all you come every morning to do is to sing. There's going to be some a time that's going to ask you, what is wrong with what? With you. <laughs> praise is good. Tell your neighbor praise is good. Yes. Make it a habit. Praise is good. So, praise breaks the enemy's oppression and creates uh, miracles. Acts 16, 25 to 26. Number four, who's going to read that for us? Number four. Yes. Praise brings deliverance from demonic oppression. Let's look at 1 Samuel 16. 1 Samuel 16. There is an interesting story there in which uh, King David participated. 1 Samuel 16, 14 to 23. Yes. What departed from Saul? The Spirit of the Lord. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. He's troubling you. Yes. Mm. 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 It's hard. Yes. And you shall.
and well. And the evil spirit will do what? We depart. When was the last time you feel depressed? We have been told here that there is a solution to that. If God has a solution for you to have, you can battle with depression. All you need to do is to offer sacrifice of what? Sacrifice of praise. The Bible tells us that Saul was overwhelmed by evil spirits. And he called on David to play what? Praise the spiritual way. Because the body spirit and the spirit of God, both of them, they don't what? They are. Even in real life, the practical life, they don't. They don't. I went home and I bought a, I always buy a lot of good material that I need to give. So I bought this watch. It's in a case. And there is this, my neighbor. Um, I think he used to call himself a Muslim. But I don't know what religion he practices anymore. So I had uh, told my wife. But even in the case of the wristwatch, I didn't notice that wristwatch that at the center here, what is in there is the cross of Jesus. I did not even notice myself. So I gave it to him. So, and he thanked me because he didn't open it in my presence. And he thanked me very well. I so much felt like he loved it. So, the following morning, I came back home, and I saw the very gift that I gave to that man on my dining table. <laughs> and I said, ah, this man didn't take uh, the gift. Oh, do I have two of these? Uh, uh, did I buy two? So, it's like my wife was looking at me like this. She said, he just left that he has brought your gift back, that he, <laughs> that he doesn't use anything with the cross of what? With the cross of Jesus. I said, oh my God. <laughs> Some people cannot take it. So when I finally saw him, I said, ah, you returned the, the thing I gave you. He said, yes. He said, ah, no, 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 I hate stuff like cross. Ah. He said, if you want to give me something, give me phone. I don't want anything cross. And the phone should not have words. <laughs> that is how powerful. That is how powerful. The cross is. That is how powerful it is. May God help us in Jesus' name. Number five, we receive breakthrough by offering sacrifice of praise. We are almost done. We receive breakthrough by offering sacrifice of what? Sacrifice of praise. Yeah. First Joshua 6, 1 to 20. We all know what happened in the in that Bible passage. We all remember the wall of Jericho. What happened to the wall of Jericho? It fell. How did it fall? Shout. Shout of what? Praise. And they receive breakthrough just because they offer sacrifice of what? Of praise. After all, their problem was how to break the wall. May 
God help us in Jesus' name. And the last but not the least, which I have here, is in 2 Kings 15, 19. God give us new revelations and insights when we offer sacrifice of what? Yes, when we offer sacrifice of praise. 2 Kings 15, 19. You are the first to be there, just ready for it. 2 Kings 15, 19. Yes. 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 Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Separating a wrong that passage there. That's not what I was uh, talking about. I'm talking about Elijah's revelation. Uh, I don't know whether it's first king or something. Yeah, of Elijah. Yeah, that is it. Uh -huh. When it was taken up, yes, that's what I was saying. Anyway. What I'm trying to bring down is God give us new revelations and insight when we offer what? Sacrifice of what? Sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of praise. Ask your neighbor when was the last time you praised God? It's got to be continuously. It's got to be every time. You see, God, the Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. God does what? He inhabits the praises of his people. That's where he dwells. That's where he dwells. You see? Praise brings us into the safety of God's presence. That's what he's doing. May God help us in Jesus' name. I have a warning for us before we leave tonight. There are two major reasons why praise is hard. Two major reasons why praise is what? It's hard. And it will be funny to you what these reasons are. We have discussed the first one. The first one is suffering. You will never experience suffering in your life. You will never experience suffering in your life. Brethren have seen people suffer. To the extent when you mention God in their presence, that's not what they want to hear. They will even tell you they have fasted, they have done this, they have done that. But they were not patient enough. When I came to this country, I see people, even up to now, people looking for green card. You see, when you come to a country like America, I've seen the most Benevolent woman turning into a prostitute because of what? Suffering. Because they keep moving her from here to here. To there. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. It's very easy for us to come to church. It's very easy for us to smile. It's very easy to go to party when we have been there. There are people that find difficult to get out. There are people, as we are talking, that are making their exits into Canada. Because they stayed there more over five years. They could not get work. They could not get papers. Suffering is not good. Let us be very frank. Suffering is not what? It's not good. Suffering is an enemy of praise. But like we have learned today, trick is strengthen yourself in the Lord. Strengthen yourself in who? the Lord and generate sacrifice of praise. Prayerfully generate sacrifice of praise. And 
God will help you with Jesus. Again, which might surprise us, the opposite of suffering, again, will be an enemy to praise. Abundance. Abundance could make you to forget God. You see? Praise will not only disappear from your heart. Abundance can have the same result when it seems like we have all of it together. We can neglect praise. We can do what? We can neglect praise. See, the Bible tells us that this room grows up and thick and it forgets his God. When we are not suffering, we think we are comfortable. When we are being blessed, we worship the blessing and we forget the word, the giver. A lot of times we do that. We even forget to praise his holy name. Uh, my take home to you, to all of us, is that let us take care that we do not forget the Lord. Let us do what? Take care that we do not forget the Lord. That's what Paul, Deuteronomy 6 12. Somebody read Deuteronomy 6 12. Deuteronomy 6 12. That was what uh, Moses told the people of Israel. Deuteronomy 6 12. Yes. Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of what? Bondage. The Israelites are funny and strange people. If you look to the book of Kings all over, you will see again, 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 the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of what? Of the Lord. I don't know how many times I came across that. So again, the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Because each time they are comfortable, they forget who? They forget God. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. You see? When we are comfortable, we rest comfortably in the ease of our blessings to the extent that we forget the giver. God help us in Jesus. Brethren, I want us to round up with a song which I seriously love. Which I seriously love. I seriously love that song where we use it to just praise the Almighty God. It's the song that we all like. Um, if we have it on the board, that will be fine. So we'll just sing it together comfortably to praise the King of Kings. It's, O oh Lord, my God, when I'm in what? When I'm in awesome wonder. You see, consider all what? Yes, all the works thy hand has made. You see, O oh Lord our God, when I'm in awesome wonder. I thought it was going to put it on the screen. I told them earlier. Maybe, maybe it's still, it's still battling with it. Um, oh, it's there now. So at the count of three, let us sing it together. One, two, three. Oh, Lord, my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all that was thy hand has made. I see the star, I hear the mighty thunder, thy word through hearts, thy universe display. Then sing my 